Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show how to create an animation of a meteor shower. Here we are looking at a, a meteor map made by uh, Tamoyan Dijkema, and it's based on data from uh, CAMS. CAMS is an automated video surveillance of the night sky, uh, with many people around the world participating and creating these uh, nice data sets. Now we're looking at a normal day, but let's switch to a date where we see many more meteors because there's a meteor shower from the press heats. So I choose uh, 12 August uh, 2021 and you see here that there were many meteorites that uh, night. And the map is showing the ground track. And there's a nice blog on uh, meteor news about this uh, website. So have a look if you want to know more about uh, this data on the ground tracks of uh, meteors. So when we scroll down on the page, we can find the table for this data set that we are looking at. And we see that it has several attributes, like the start of the observation, longitude and latitude of the beginning of the observation, the height of the beginning, the longitude and latitude of the end of the observation and the height at the end. And we can download this data as a CSV file. Let's do that. We can import a CSV file in QGIS, use add layer, add delimited text, and then open the CSV file. And it's comma separated, it's automatically recognized uh, when we look at the sample, that looks good. Make sure you choose that it has point coordinates and use the beginning coordinates and choose the correct uh, projection, which in this case is EPSG4326. So it's in geographic coordinate system. Let's add some uh, reference data so we know where we are. I'll use the quick map services plugin and I choose from CartoDB, uh, one of those dark matters. Let's choose the one without labels. And there we see where we are. But let's also change the projection of this project. Uh, our focus here is the Netherlands, so I use the Dutch projection. And now we have the project in the correct projection. Let's see if the attribute table looks still okay. Yes, that's all that we need. So let's change these points now into lines with the starting coordinate and the end coordinates that are in the attribute table. So I go to the layer styling panel. I click on simple marker and I change this now to geometry generator. And we can now generate a line, so I indicate here that the geometry type is line string or multi-line string. And then I'm going to edit this expression here. And if you search for the make uh, functions, then you see there are different types and we can make a line. So we use the make line function and it basically needs coordinates on the line. Our first coordinate is the geometry itself, the point. When we import it, we use the uh, beginning coordinate. But then the second coordinate of the line, we need to use make point. And we use there uh, the coordinates from two fields in the attribute table. That is the long end, the longitude of the end, and the lat end. Close it with brackets. And there we see in the preview geometry line string, so that's indeed what we want. Click OK, and now you see the lines there. Because of the background, they're not very visible, but here it is. The next step is to style these lines with the interpolated line renderer. So you go to a simple line, and we change the symbol layer type to interpolated line. And we're going to vary the width and we are going to use varying color. And then it's a matter of playing uh, with the numbers to have the correct uh, scaling of the width and uh, the color as you uh, like to see. And now it looks close to what we want. Um, I'm using the Viridis color ramp here. You can change this to any that uh, makes sense. Viridis is nice because it goes from uh, blue to yellow and it will look nice on the black background. I think this looks nice. 
Now let's have a look at uh, how to animate this. So go to the layer properties of Meteors. And there under the temporal tab, I switch on the dynamic temporal control. And it will find the field that contains these uh, start, date and times of the observations. So now we uh, recognize the little clock next to the layer name and we can change the temporal controller settings. And we see there the correct dates. And we see the animation, but the steps go in hours, so I switch it to minutes. And this looks already close to what we want. If you click the gear, you can change the frame rate to control the speed. Now it would be really nice to have also a counter for the date and the time. So I'm going to create a temporary scratch layer. Of course, you can make a permanent layer to do this. Um, I call it time, give the geometry type point, keep the projection as it is. And I'm going to add a point where I want uh, the label. And then I go to the label settings and I choose single labels. And I go to the expression dialog. And I want some uh, text, uh, meteors as a string. Then I use the concatenate button and add a new line. You can see it in the preview below. And then I need a variable to add the time. And that's the map start time variable. If I double click, it's added. But we still need to format it so we will have the date extracted from it and we use there the format date function and in the uh, help text on the right you can see how to uh, format it and we need to put it in a string so that's uh, the day number then the full month name and then the year close the bracket and there you see in the preview 12 august 2021 i concatenate and a new line and there I copy the part that I already had because I'm going to add the time so I want them in 24 hour in notation so use capital H and then the minutes I will leave out the seconds if you want them you can add them as uh, SS And just some units here, otherwise people wonder what the number is. Now let's style the label to make it uh, visible. Let's choose another font. In this case, maybe Consolas is nice. And I use uh, white. Change the placement settings that it's uh, centered. And make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to remove the marker. So no symbol. And then we only have the label. Save the layer. And now we need to add the timestamp. So I switch on dynamic tempo control. And I use here redraw layer only. And let's see what happens. And now we see the meteors animated and the time is running. The minutes are increasing. So this is exactly what we want. Now it's always good to give credits to uh, the data that you use. And at the bottom of the screen you see already uh, some text. So I use this uh, decorator and I remove what is automatically added. And uh, make sure that everything is there. And you can change the font color to white so it will be showing nicely on this black background map. And now I can export the animation. I save it to the folder presets and I keep the defaults to use the map frame and you can still change the range of the temporal settings there and it will save then for every frame a PNG file in that folder. So after exporting I'm going to use GIMP 
create the animated GIF. So I open the image as layers and I choose all the layers, all the PNG files that we created. And it takes a while. So now all the map frames are in PNG format as a layer in GIMP. And we can go now to filters, animation, and choose then the option to optimize for a GIF. That normally takes a, a long time, but here I've uh, sped it up a bit. And now we can export this as a GIF, and you simply need to give a file name uh, with the extension GIF, and then it will understand what you want to create. Of course, we need to uh, choose that it's an animation, and you can play with the delay between the frames um, to change the speed of the GIF. I keep the default here, and let's have a look. So here we see our animation. So in this video you've learned how to create an animation of the ground tracks of meteors from a CSV file and to use styling from the interpolated line renderer and the temporal controller to animate this through time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you like these videos, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, looking forward to see you again.